3D printed food, right? Okay, yeah. 3D printed food, right? Yeah. So we've seen that you have something called circuit jet that prints a circuit board from a printer. It's got me thinking, where are we going with this? People used to hate printers. Now printers are printing food. You're printing circuit boards. What's next? Are we going to start printing robots from printers? You never know. <laughs> but talk about circuit jet real quick. So circuit jet, yeah, circuit jet really is sort of a, a bridging the gap of a more professional solution. So over here we've got industrial materials, which is mm -hmm. hardcore integrated into like very advanced, complicated manufacturing lines. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you have a rollerball pin full of conductive ink to teach kids like what basic circuit concepts are of electricity, magnetism, etc. So circuit jet really started on a way. Well, as soon as you start learning how to make basic circuits, they they start getting so complicated very quickly that you aren't going to want to write them by hand. It's not very practical. Even hooking yeah. up an Arduino, some mm -hmm. relatively simple microcontroller, there's too many interconnects for you to do it by hand. You immediately have to use towards a more automated deposition device, i.e. a printer. Like mm -hmm. you've got to have something along those lines. Where CircuitJet really started was the idea of having a desktop tool that allowed you to create PCB prototypes rapidly with conductive inks. Post-COVID, uh, when the DoD really started focusing on our supply chain is really weak as far as most of our electronic supply chain is not not a secret runs through China slash Asia Pacific. They view that as a strategic weakness because uh -huh. for the past 30 years, we basically outsourced the entire electronics manufacturing industry overseas, True. which is a big problem from our just, uh, just strategically and our just domestic workforce and manufacturing and labor. That's why a lot of the infrastructure I would say doesn't exist over here is because none of the manufacturing is happening over here anymore. And so... There was a lot of interest there. And so we, we got some DOD-based contracts around that. And then that's really morphed into legitimate PCB prototyping, where it started off with just conductive inks. And we have that more as a more professional educational tool for people that are more advanced electrical engineering courses to do PCB layout. Now CircuitJet has the starting substrate for our more professional units are, are copper clad laminates, like actual PCB substrates. Mm -hmm. You use a laser etcher to etch it away, and then you actually use inkjet to come in to use our materials to fill in vias, to finish the board in gold if you need an enig finish, like a professionally finished board, print down solder mask, dispense solder, pick and place and place components so that you can literally have a full PCB fab in a box. Mm -hmm. That's what it's sort of morphed into because we saw a lot of customer demand there and, and I've had pull towards that way. But it started off as a, okay, we need a more professional tool that's more a simple printer style thing to now like, okay, where there's actually a really a lot of demand is we can't create all the plating infrastructure that they have in China or other Asia Pacific regions here. But what if we could sidestep that entire need for all that environmentally heavy footprint, learn those lessons that we've learned from outsourcing for the past 30 years, consolidate that down, use advanced materials to sidestep some of those issues. Okay. And now you can have PCB prototyping in something the size of a microwave. That's not, that's not too bad.